we'll have a little drive to, what did you say, Hales Abbey? Just to see where it is. I'll have yeah. to ask Mr. Satner how to get there. Yeah. There's a chance to drive through Broadway anyway. Yep. Did he actually say do you want to start navigation? I haven't pressed the button yet. Oh. Because he went all silent, didn't he? Before? Yeah, it's gone into silent mode, hasn't it? Yeah. Okay. You won't be driving. I don't know, 200 yards. No, we won't be driving through Broadway. No, but we were going the right way. Yeah. We think. Pheasant Inn, yeah. Hales Abbey. No, oh, Hales Fruit Farm. No, no, it said Hales Abbey. Oh, yeah. did it? Yeah. Well, all right. yeah, no, I'm going to the fruit farm now. Oh, I thought you might be. See the English Heritage sign up there. There's more visitors parking here and further up. English heritage. Yeah, dogs allowed on leads. Dogs allowed on leads, there you go. Yeah, it's on grass, so it should be all right. Yeah, sure. Just a bit worried, obviously, walking on pavements that yeah. would check the ground, it's not that hot. And as it's on grass as well, there should be some shade. We've got plenty of water. Great Cistercian Abbey. One of the most famous abbeys of the Middle Ages, attracting pilgrims from all over England and linked to the royal family. Founded by Richard, Earl of Cromwell in 1246, in thanks for his survival of a storm at sea, brother of King Henry III, and one of the wealthiest men in, it, in the country. His second wife and three of his children are buried in the church close to the high altar. Ruins of Hales, you see, are the core abbey buildings these were set in a much wider precinct containing farm buildings, orchards and fish ponds, as illustrated on the right. We're standing in the door northeast leading to the uh, Abbey Church which runs west to east. Beyond lies the cloister and the rest of the Abbey buildings. Get Poppy moving. There we go. Yeah, you've had a busy day so far, haven't you, Pops? <laughs> Been to, been to the um, on the railway this morning. Whoop. We thought we'd just take a drive out, see what this is like. We didn't really intend coming here, but yeah. I wonder what was the these square stones were. Yeah, the foundations are something, aren't they? Yeah. It's where the church was. So this was the cloister, this is the heart of monastic life, quiet open space for study and contemplation. Most important abbey buildings were arranged around the cloister, an open courtyard surrounded by covered wall walkways to the monks cloister with expression of their removal from the outside world, entirely south contained, seen as a heavenly paradise. Here they could tend the garden, meditate, study or write. Books and manuscripts may have been stored in the cupboards to our right. 
was a ritual space and on Sundays important feast days, feast days and monks paraded around the cloister. This way. Also got to try and keep Poppy away from the long grass because lots of ticks and fleas about her. lived here in the West Range, uh, the space to the left of the passageway and there were storerooms to the right. A dormitory was on the upper floor. An illiterate and a lowly social status lived and worshipped separately from the monks and had different routines. Lay brothers worked in the fields and tended livestock, allowing Cistercian abbeys to be self-sufficient. There were never many lay brothers at Hales and by the 14th century this ceased to be a significant part of the community. Uh, the place taken by servants. The lay brothers' accommodation was turned into the abbot's house. You waiting for me, Pops? Yeah, it's a bit cooler here, so that's oh, yeah, why we're here. Oh yeah, a bit of shade here. Yeah. I think this is still the lay brothers' is it? area, I think so. It's uh, very peaceful here. Yeah, you can see why they came here. Yeah. So oh, this is the kitchen here. So you would have been able to get off the railway, wouldn't you, at the halt and come here? Yes, yeah. And it was one of the few to survive the dismantling of the abbey in the mid-16th century. Continued to be used by families living in Hale's house. That was the abbey's converted West Range. Well, you can't go with her, though, can you? can she? Yeah. They wash their hands here in a stone trough before entering the factory. It was piped directly from the Cotswold Hills. Arch has been restored. You can see some of the original decoration. Yeah, you can, can you? Restored in AD 1929, it looks like. A stairs to Monk's daughter. <laughs> Through here. It's quite a ruin, isn't it? It is. It's quite pretty. Very peaceful. A little bit about the monk's routine here. Monks followed a, a strict daily timetable, regulating every aspect of their lives, divided into day and night routines. It's a large day room, the monks uh, may have copied manuscripts and mended their clothes. There are cupboards set in the wall to our right and uh, the room is divided by columns and lit by windows in the south wall. The dormitory was above this room, so up there somewhere. Yeah. Ran all the way along the east range. The monks rose between 1 and 2.30 a.m. for the first services of the day. What does that remind well, you of? Yeah, that's what you do, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, returned to bed between 6.30 right. and 8.15 8, p.m. Yeah, you do that. Slept fully clothed in wooden beds with straw mattresses. Beds were set at right angles to the walls. The stair to the dormitory is just outside the door at the other end. The dormitory, the night stairs, provided access straight into the church. Uh, 12th century script, uh, manuscript miniature showing St. Benedict handing a copy of the rule to a group of monks. It's got a pie chart of how they spent the day. 11 hours in prayer, three yeah. hours reading, five hours sleeping, two hours eating, and three hours work. Five hours sleep, eh? Then I was praying. It's about wow. what poppy lies us. <laughs> <laughs> were you a monk in your previous <laughs> life? <laughs> you were religious, were you, Pop? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Stop it. Don't you You're shouting. talking to her now, aren't we? So. Yeah. It was dangerous. Yeah, they say that the uh, the stonework is particularly uh, vulnerable to frost damage because they're in a frost hollow here. You wouldn't think it here, we're standing here, it's a 70 odd degrees. But yeah, a little bit about the pilgrims here. Possessed a precious relic believed to be drops of Christ's blood. In 1270, Richard Earl of Cromwell brought to Hales Abbey a phial of the Holy Blood. Prized relic placed in a silver and crystal flask received a great ceremony. The east end of the church was rebuilt with a splendid shrine surrounded by a shivat or crown of five radiating chapels. 
the blood of Hales attracted thousands of pilgrims. We came in hope of a miracle to ask forgiveness for the sins or out of curiosity. The illustration right shows pilgrims waiting their turn to be admitted. For over 250 years, the money and offerings they brought helped to finance the abbey. Hmm. You hear me above the helicopter? I said, uh, 300 years of Cistercian life came to an end in 8, 1539, when you know what. <laughs> <laughs> you know who. And by you know who. Some of the buildings were reused as country houses, but by the mid 18th century, the whole place was in a ruin. A century later, the remains of the abbey were so overgrown that it's been described in a tourist guide as being concealed in a wimple of nature's manufacture. No use of you being concealed in a wimple, is it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what was the, the map of it? Lie, that's the cloister. That's about the only bit that's sort of really left, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's where the doors are over. Yeah, yeah. So we've been sort of there, haven't we? Mm. The kitchen. Yeah. Views of Hales Abbey in 1950. And that's what it might have looked like. Hales Abbey, the seat of Lord Tracy, that says. Oh, so that was some garden he had. Wow, yeah, look at this. Yeah. Ornate gardens. That's an outing of the uh, Ash Church Women's Institute to Hales Abbey in 1954. Ooh, got the hats on. Yeah, very sensible too. <laughs> <laughs> the workmen in the ruins of Hales Abbey in 1900. Major program of archaeological ex ex excavations took place here between 1899 and 1908. Oh, Richard's Monastery. 14, uh, 1246. By the standards of the uh, five years it took them to build it and they built the church, the church chapter house, cloister, dormitory and refectory, all completed within five years. Cost more than six thousand six hundred pounds. Wow. Which is yeah. a lot of money in 1246. That's still quite a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you could almost buy a car for that. <laughs> <laughs> almost. The reconstruction of the chapter house. Like that. Hmm. Some of the original stonework here. Cistercians were noted for their technological innovation, high quality of their architecture. Master Mason overseeing the works had practical Skills learned through many years of experience and a sophisticated understanding of geometry. Known to draw and work from plans and his direction. And there were teams of quarrymen, stonemasons, carpenters, glazers, blacksmiths, tilers, carters and labourers, all supported by the monks and lay brothers. Timber scaffolding was erected during the building and sockets in the masonry used, known as putlog holes were used to support the beams. They can be seen on several surviving structures at Hales. Masonry blocks weighing several hundred kilograms were lifted into place using an ingenious system of cranes and winches and pulleys, all operated by hand. Operated. That's a new one. And this is the bit about the uh, relic of the Holy Blood, and that's in the church. And they brought back the, to the abbey a portion of the blood shed by Christ on the cross, allegedly. And to accommodate this important relic, an entirely new east end of the uh, was added to the Abbey Church. Five poly polygonal chapels swung out in a semicircle or chevette. The Holy Blood soon became a popular pilgrim destination. The new east end had a similar plan to West End Minster Abbey. I presume that's what you're looking at there, is it? Mm. That picture. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah. A contemporary document suggested a mason called Beringer was in charge of these works at Hales, completed in 1277. 
a 15th century poem about the Holy Blood describes Edmund's generosity to Hales Abbey and the building of five chapels in the Chevette. Look about the building works here. These look like they've been sort of constructed new, don't they? Well, yeah. Apart from this. <laughs> Apart from the bit at the top. Yeah. And the buildings of a large monastery such as Hales required constant maintenance and the poor repair is documented on more than one occasion. It took a major program of refurbishment in the 15th and 16th century, including the additions of ornamental battlements to the exterior of the church and the works on the abbot's house in about 1500. The Abbey granted a mason called William Hunderley accommodation and income for his service. He was also the master mason at York Minster in the late 15th century. That's York Minster. Yeah. Hmm. It's a bit about the late medieval cloister. Some of the windows he would have had carved with angels and a stone vault ornamented with bosses sculpted with the arms of some of the rich benefactors working in the cloister contained to the uh, suppression. And then it was plundered, of course. Monastic life came to an end on Christmas Eve, 1539, when the abbey was closed by the commissioners of Henry VIII. Looting was on such an enormous scale that a special inquiry uh, was held in 1541-42. to 42. Those plundering the abbey included servants, artisans, the gentry and even priests. Some have been known to be sympathetic to the monasteries and traditional Catholic beliefs. Others were supporters of religious reform. For the most, the primary motive was profit. Shame, in that. So sad. It would have been like we still had some of these abbeys. I know. Yeah, I've just come up to Stanton, thought we'd have a little look. Oh, this is lovely, wow. isn't it? Yeah. Thatch roofs. Real Cotswolds village, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, roses. Beautiful. Broad Broadways this way. Yeah, very nice. I'm actually looking for the viaduct, but I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. Do you want to drive up to Broadway Tower? We could do. I think it's about a mile and a half walk to the actual tower there. Oh, is it? Yeah. I have a look show where it is. Yeah. Coming into the high street, aren't we? Yeah. I think we did do a video. We walked all the way up and all the way down, didn't we? Yeah. Put a link in the description. In colder weather. Cooler weather, at least. Cooler weather, yeah. It's not too bad today, it's 28, but uh, I think we both feel the heat these days, and Poppy certainly does. We tend to try and go out in the, uh, in the mornings. Yeah.
to do 25 miles an hour on the next one. <laughs> in the motor and this would be, isn't it? We have been up here and okay. various motor homes, yeah. 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 Right, so Broadway Tower or Fish Hill? Let's see what Fish Hill is. Shall we? Or? No, I'll go on Broadway. Okay. in there though, wouldn't it? If you will move. No, you can see it from absolutely miles and miles away, can't you? Yeah. So just wanted to see what it was like. It, it's a real sort of Folly, isn't Folly, it? Folly, yeah. <laughs> mock uh, battlements on the top there. Oh, that's right, there was a, Lan a, a bomber crash here, it wasn't a Lancaster, it was a Whitley. Yeah. Oh, you're funny, born. Yeah. 19, what was that, 40? I can't read it, 1940 or 43. Mario Honeyborn. Mm. Yeah, I suppose the thing is, it's so flat everywhere else. You come up on this hill. A bit of fog or whatever. What such a view, isn't it? It is. So I've got a talking guide, so I don't know how I'm going to do this, but there we go. So. This is the dining room. Restored it. 's you know living rooms and dining rooms and all sorts of things in there it turned it into a proper home uh, in 1975 oh yeah yeah 
yeah. Looks right. And it's fantastic views of the top. Nope, same one. <laughs>